Bio material is a very actual topic. Many times we talk about which could be the best properties that the biomaterial needs to have. Because of my experience as an oral surgeon and because of the review I wrote with some friends of mine, I'd like to share my experience on this topic with all of you. And uh, as Albert Einstein says, we have to start from the biological point of view in order to understand why we have to put our biomaterial inside our defects. And uh, we need to keep under consideration a main difference between regeneration and or reparation. It means that if we leave a defect alone, we still have a good healing, but the healing in this case will be incomplete or imperfect because of the soft tissue that will grow inside the defect. So when we place and we add our materials, we have to consider which kind of final result we expect to have. Reparation means to have a healing with, as a final result, a different material, a different tissue from the tissue that was previously present there. Regeneration means to have, at the end of the story, exactly the same tissue with the same properties that we had at the beginning, before the injury of this area. Of course, we treat in our procedures several and different uh, defects. So, before selecting the biomaterials we want to use, we have to keep in mind that defects are different, final results can be different, also according to the patient the area that can be treated, the vascularization of this area and some other problems like metabolic disease or general condition of the patient. When we select our biomaterials we have to think about their properties and according to that we can define biomaterials in two main groups. One can be considered a bond substitute, the other group can be defined as a bone regenerative material. The difference in between those two groups is how they are resorbable. If they are totally resorbable, they can be considered as regenerative biomaterials because at the end of the healing processes we will not find anymore the biomaterial that was implanted inside the defect. If we have a non-resorbable biomaterials, they can be considered as a bone substitute and the final result will always be a reparation because some particles, some components of the biomaterial will remain there. And uh, as uh, we can see in this uh, picture, some material like the autogenous bone that is usually considered as a gold standard can belong to both sides depending on the selected properties of the material if cortical or particle. And in the same concept all the other biomaterial can be divided between the two list. The only one that belongs to only one side, to only one list, is the xenogenic biomaterial that because non-resorbable by definition will always remain in the side of bone substitute. Biomaterials interact with the healing processes, especially in the two first healing sites 
One is the early healing, and the second one is the remodeling of the bone. And if we go through the biological moments of the healing processes, we can easily see that not also the autogenous bone, usually considered as the gold standard, is really the best material for some aspects. And the funny aspect is that the bone the beta phosphatum tricalcium, that is a synthetic biomaterial, seems to have all the characteristics that we really need to have a good regeneration with a total perfect healing of the tissue. So, given that, I think that if we want to define not really the best in the world, but at least one of the better material we can select for the everyday use in our practice, I think that beta-phosphatium tricalcium can fulfill the expectation of a normal dental use, not only for the oral surgeon, but also for the normal dentist, because of the characteristic of this material that, uh, given that it is uh, totally resorbable, safe because synthetic, and not expensive, can be easily used for several uses in our dental practice. Mm -hmm.